I was born that way. It is the Raw Wrap up on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios. No, the Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview, the neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Radio Tech Chalk Monday Night Raw with my friends here, of course, from Poughkeepsie, New York. He's the only one on the roster here with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Sorg, I'm going to be as lucid as possible because my Cowboys are winning, but... Man, that was a raw tonight. That was a raw. And also with us to also join us on a brand new camera. We're kind of lighting a little bit. It is mainstream Matt. What's he doing here? <laughs> What's he doing here? <laughs> yeah, it was. He, he said, like he said if Brock won, he was done. That's why I showed up. I thought he was finished. Mm -hmm. I never thought he was going to watch Raw again. Mike, I thought you were free, man. Mike, be free. Fly away. You would have been better off quitting Raw. You'd be a happier person right now if you would have quit watching Raw because your boy was in the main event. So why are you I, here? Mad point, Mike, why are you on, here? Hold on. At, at this point, I would like to issue a formal apology to um to 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 Pittsburgh, to the Mayhem Nation. To wrestling fans at large, um, this is my fault. <laughs> this is what I wanted. And maybe, you know, th there, there's a song. There's a song. You can't always get what you want. And sometimes that should just be true. Sork. <laughs> Yes, yes. So it was the raw. The I'm not sure where you went with that. Was that an apology to Brock Lesnar? Was that an apology to me? Like, where were we going with that one? I was. Um, no, no, no apologies to anyone else. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just, I'm just apologizing about the Enzo thing. All right. Well, let, <laughs> let's, let's, apologize let's, for. Let's, let's turn this around a little bit. Mike, what did uh -huh. you like about Monday Night Raw this week? Um, Braun Strowman trucking the shit out of Kerr Hawkins. <laughs> 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 that honestly was goddamn amazing, and it'd be even better if he did it while wearing the Universal Championship. Mm. <laughs> he wouldn't be as angry. Yes, he would. Do you know why? Because he's brawn. Okay. All right. All right. Sure. 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 Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's just do, do this positivity thing for a little bit. Matt, 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 Matt what's your, your favorite part of Raw tonight? Well, all, all apologies to Braun Strowman, um, a, a spirit animal to all of us. That Enzo Amore promo was straight fire sword. Mm -hmm. You know it. I know it. Mad Mike denies it, but you and I both know it. It was amazing. The I, only I, thing missing from that final segment was that Neville did not more decisively and viciously kill him at the end of that show. That needed like... Cruiser Brock needed to go full Cruiser Brock on Enzo <laughs> and just beat the crap out of him. That beating was not sufficient enough. But uh, kudos to Enzo. And you know what? Pretty good job by Neville, too, mm. in, a, uh, in Honestly, an un uh, uncharted territory for him. I, I never on the Enzo thing is. I know a lot of people don't like it. If we're turning Enzo full heel, which it looks like we're doing, then it's the smartest fucking call they've made in a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, no, I am dead serious. When the promo started, I was like, "Oh, what is this?" But then he just went full heel, and I'm okay with that. It just kind of sucks for Neville because now he can't be the top heel on 205 Live. Well, I don't. Well, that might be true too. But now he's the top face, and now we're gonna get a really long even, chase. I don't even think that's true. I think I we're going to get a really true. long title chase now, and 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 now we've got the whole deal where Neville has violated the um, the whatever that hold harmless or what what the hell was that thing the the mm. the, the fifty the, the meter no, the no touch uh, the, the no touchy yeah the, 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 the piece of paper the wrestling trope I really whatever the thing I really he, he violated the wrestling trope and now he's going to be out of the title picture let's 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 all start right now with the fantasy booking of neville winning the royal rumble and taking <laughs> and picking a title shot at, at enzo so we can kill so we can murder enzo at wrestlemania for the cruiserweight title um if enzo is still the cruiserweight champion by the time the royal rumble rolls around then i will reverse my decision because something is seriously going wrong mm. <laughs> I mean, but, but you got to say, like, you, like, I love, you look back at all the weird, like, this Enzo thing's weird. 
this Enzo thing's real weird. Like we said for <laughs> weeks on the midweek war, right? And mm-hmm. it, and and yeah. there was a culmination tonight. Oh yeah, but see, they didn't do the culmination right, in my opinion. Okay. I think every single cruiserweight should have walked down to the ring. Neville should have kicked him in the dick, and then every single cruiserweight did their finish on him. I think that would have been a little that, bit too no, much. Because that way, I think you they've could... all laid their hands on him. Right. So. So the clause is null and void because otherwise there wouldn't be a show. No, I mean, this was about, I think it was important to show that the entire division was against Neville or or against Enzo. But this, this was Neville's moment as much as it was Enzo's. That's why this was, that's why it's called a double turn because you've got to turn both guys. You can't turn the entire division. You got to focus, make sure that the focus is on Neville too. He's mm. the star of this. He's the chaser. Uh, from from the chat, from the chat. Uh, first of all, Alex, Alex out there in California is saying tomorrow night uh, we find that uh, we find out Neville weighs two hundred and seven pounds. I'm thinking <laughs> like, well, hey, I guess somebody's going to SmackDown, right? No, would not disappoint nope. me. No, yeah, it would be disappointing, wouldn't it? No, 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 you can't do that at this point. I don't you think you. Sh- do I don't think you should do that at this point, but. There was a part of me that thought maybe that's where they were going mm-hmm. when Enzo won mm-hmm. the title. Yep. I mean, if any if anyone goes to SmackDown, it should be the entire cruiserweight division. Mm-hmm. And and once... be because yeah, go ahead. No, well, the be- one of the best episodes of Two Hundred Five Live we got recently was the one where they had SmackDown integration. They've tried Raw integration with Titus O'Neil and it doesn't work. SmackDown has lighter uh, guys. I'm not saying the Titus thing didn't work though. I thought the Titus um, stuff was great. Tozawa did win the it title. It was, but it didn't end the way it should have. Well, yeah, okay, okay, booking hat, Mike. Well, how should it have ended? Um, with Akira Tozawa having more than a six-day title reign. Okay. Like, if this was Enzo doing this to Tozawa to Zaw- to instead of Neville, that would make Enzo the heel immediately, and we wouldn't have gone through this awkward phase. Well, you know, 205 Live is kind of in, in his teenage years, so awkward faces kind of make sense. Uh, Tina's kind of on a, on a brainstorm that, that I had during it where we would have found out that it wasn't uh, – the clause wasn't Kurtz. Like, it, I, you know, I, I'm thinking like – like, and I don't remember – maybe I missed this backstage, but, uh, you know, he had the piece of paper, and I was hoping like, like Neville would get his hands on it and say, this is blank. <laughs> or, you know. or, or, or you could have Neville kick Enzo in the dick and just – keep kicking him, and then he grabs the mic and says, there you go, Enzo, I never laid a hand on you. I think you need to table the kicking in the dick because, I, I hate to break this to you, that's the final spot for the title change. We are, so, no, we are know, peak dick kick. Right? We are, you we don't are just give that away kick. for free, Sorg. No, no, you no. You pay no. for the you kicking gotta, in the dick. Yeah, yeah, you can't get away with that on USA Network anymore. <laughs> Hashtag dick kick. <laughs> Is that Dakota Kai's finisher? There, yeah, that's there, right. hasn't, there hasn't been a bigger dick kick since Undertaker kicked Brock in the dick. Okay. That was the last time we had a big dick kick. I, I you know what, I, I'm gonna have to go with them because I don't. Right. I haven't been. So, uh... so can we th- can we talk about something else about Raw tonight? Sure, we'll <laughs> talk about plenty about Enzo. I'm sure on Midweek War this week. Oh, oh, I'm sure. The Zo Show. Because. Um, I- I mean, this is the only thing that happens in the week where we get something that ends raw, and then we have the immediate fallout the next day. Yeah. Like, this isn't a thing that happens. Oh, I'm getting messages. And you got big fallout this time. My this battery's is not running just low. Like Sorry about that. Some backstage interview segment where no, they're setting no, up no. for some six man. This uh, is like, this was the main event. Yes. Now, granted, the Cowboys were playing on Monday night. <laughs> I mean, yes. and, and I was kind of like, what the hell's going on? I, oh. I, I love watching the collective internet what? and Mad Mike say, what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> during this well, thing. See, here's the weird thing. Like, the Miz versus Roman match, like mm-hmm. that main event match, that wasn't during halftime. It was around halftime. I mean, I, I, I... No, it wasn't. Trust me, I had the game on. The game was already in the third quarter. Well, I, I got in my car to drive over here to the to the Sorgatron Media Studios and heard on the radio that the game was at halftime and was kind of driving over here, assuming that Roman and Miz were going to be the main event. And then I got here and I was like, oh, what was 
I thinking? Of course they put him on while the game was going to halftime. But um, I mean, I I don't know. Raw Raw is weird, especially during Raw football is weird season. Weird and directionless, and not no one knows what's going on. Yeah, so that's it. that sounds right. Um, so okay. Like, other this, than that, this is the problem. This is the... Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, I was gonna say this is the problem with having someone who is like a legendary character as your champion because you can't build anyone new match unless it's someone Brock has already faced. Mm-hmm. That's why they're distracting Finn Balor with Goldust. And Bray Wyatt. And apparently still Bray Wyatt for some fucking reason. <laughs> I just want Finn to get on the mic and just be like, just lay me the fuck alone. Go away! How many times do I have to beat you? You're so annoying. You're so you, annoying. Like, I at don't this care. point, at this point, Bray Wyatt is just like that annoying kid in class. I know. Who that just won't... That he's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. won't leave you alone and be like, "You're a weird kid. Go sit by yourself at the but, lunch table." See, here's, like, like they can't. Bray Wyatt had one cool moment in his career. Mm-hmm. One cool moment. It was when he had that choir of children singing he's got the whole world in his hands and his food of cena that's literally the only cool thing he's done his career and they try to break it out now but you can tell it's just the audio recording of that Mm -hmm. what you need to do is after finn beats gold dust you need to turn the lights out and you need to have a child lip syncing it in full demon balor makeup that's how you turn that to be cool again. Yeah. I, it doesn't have to be a real kid singing it. He can just stand there lip syncing it with his hands doing the Balor pose. Matt, I got to be honest. I don't think there's anything that can save Bray Wyatt anymore. Well, here, He's it, a lost cause. Here's the other thing, too. Like, we talk about Undertaker over all these years. He's evolved and in, in, in everything, right? Has Bray really evolved since he's come to the main roster? He's devolved. No. He's devolved. The, it's been, the I mean, reason The Undertaker was able to evolve was because The Undertaker won feuds. Bray Wyatt has not won a single feud ever. He has not won jack shit. Kane has won feuds. Kane has won more feuds than Bray Wyatt has. Elias Samson has won more feuds than Bray Wyatt has. <laughs> oh, shit, he has. <laughs> He's won more feuds. Oh, Revival <laughs> has won more feuds on Raw than Bray Wyatt has. Yeah, and, and they could try like, to fall him back to this. Bray doesn't care about wins or losses, but that that's bullcrap. That's a smokescreen, and that's a lie. That's a lie to the fans. He, that's a lie to the wrestlers. Wins and losses matter. It's the only way you get people over. By the way, I want to point out. now that he clearly does care about wins and losses because every time he loses he still goes after the person it's true yeah, so he never okay. stops. I put, we put a new camera in here we're testing it here tonight and, and i love like the utmost professional matt looks directly into the giant camera that's not near anybody else in the room <laughs> only when i have an important point to make yes yes there so. you go there you go true believers <laughs> um of course uh, well let's talk about uh miz let's talk about you miz. know Al- alex cars makes it makes a really good point mm-hmm all Bray has to do is Bo leave. Oh, man. That's exactly – that's the only way you can fix Bray. Though. Anything, anything. There's, you know, between well, that, between that, between just a new faction of believers to uh-huh. – to, let's believers, just – let's believers. listen, Bray. Let's just go back to basis. Let's go back to the swamp. Let's get our rocking chair out. Let's, get, let's hang out with that little light in the room. Oh, wait, that got burnt down. You know who, you know who can finally get Bray Wyatt over? Broken Matt Hardy. Oh, jeez, yes. Oh, man. Broken, Ma- Broken Matt Hardy would be able to get him over because there's there's one guy on Raw who needs to win less than Bray, and that's Matt Hardy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, Honestly, if Jeff is injured for let's just do the thing. Perfect time. Perfect let's just time. do the thing we all want to see. And he's, and he's, he's broken Matt in the ring, I, you know, more or less. So, yeah, let's just do this. All right, uh, we're actually on the clock tonight because I don't have a place to plug uh, Mike's laptop in for he's joining us on. Uh, let's in. Oh, did he go? <laughs> Goodbye, Mike. Is that it for Mike? Did I fall asleep? I think I might have fallen asleep on him. Well, 
Uh, he had a good run. Well, yeah, he did have a good run. Didn't and he, he did promise he was going to quit watching Raw after Brock. <laughs> so I feel bad though. Well, <laughs> his Cowboys are winning. His I Cowboys think Cowboys are winning. He he's happy. I think I think we got most of his opinions out, right? I, I think the important thing is that he got to get all the Enzo angst off uh, of his did, chest. He did. He did. And I, he did tell us that he thought maybe like less of this than an hour of Raw was watchable. So. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 <laughs> he he got really all the important that. information from him. Yeah. So, so, so Miz and Roman. So Miz and Roman. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's as if they. It's as if they're. <laughs> He's in the chat yelling, "I have been censored." <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first. Um, <laughs> it's as if I, they're. <laughs> I issue a damn revolt. What do you mean you issue a revolt? <laughs> that's a that's an autocorrect getting them there. there. It's got to be. Sorg. Listen, listen. Here, I, this I, I can't. We, we put a new camera in, and I I ran. Uh, I can't pull this plug up here because I'll break everything else. Um, but anyways, you hear that thud? That was that was the thing that I forgot to plug in for Mike to join us. That's why I insist on people in studio. That's right. I, insist on personal interaction. I can't unplug you. No, you can't. I'm going to just keep talking and talking until you tell me to shut up. Free Mad Mike, Brother Mad, I knew you'd come. Um, (laughs) Hey, let's let's talk about The Miz. Sorg, Sorg, Roman Reigns was beaten down by three men tonight (laughs) in the ring and left left beaten and battered by The Miz Tourage, these three dastardly individuals. What could possibly happen? Who could possibly help Roman overcome these odds? Obviously, it's the Hardy Boys. Obvious, not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they should do? They take the one healthy member of the revival and the one healthy member of the Hardy Boys and just put them together and just turn them loose. Let's do it like that for a little bit. Hold on, where you, it says Sorg, pay for the plane tickets and I'll be there every money. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll add the level to Patreon. That's one of those like independent wrestler booking email chains yeah, going on right here. Yeah, it kind of is. Just, play for, just we'll tell you pay what, for the uh, plane and hotel and I'll be right there. Just play for, pay for trans and I'll be right there, buddy. <laughs> That's right. Can trans. you take a plane out of Poughkeepsie to, to Pittsburgh? Is there a connector there? I mean, I've been some really wonky small town deals in my two years of travel oh, i'm sorry i'm adjusting this trans up. trans oh yes, <laughs> you can tell you can tell i've been around it too long it's so good <laughs> sorgy though i mean we're getting that shield reunion yes for the or are but, we but but we're not getting the shield we're getting the shield reunion so they could face the miztourage yeah yeah it's like hey remember when the rock and john cena teamed up against uh, yeah. The Miz and our truth. I know you're gonna see the the Rock and John Cena are gonna join forces and face. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but look, you know, it's kind of, and that's probably the way that it's gonna be promoted too. The Shield is back together. Isn't it gonna be great? You're gonna see them on pay per view. Pay no attention to this other team. Try to ignore the fact that. Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas are in the main event with The Miz. You know, all great. fine workers. Yeah, or, no doubt. or here's my fantasy booking hat. Maybe, maybe we do get the the Shield hanging out and 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 beating up the Miz Taraj. But how long can that last? Right? How can mm-hmm. you realistically uh, put over Axel and Bo unless we really are going to do something with Axel and Bo right now? Uh, so maybe this is just something, you know, it's a few weeks. There's another pay-per-view between then and now. Maybe we get our kind of blow off with that. And then maybe a new Wyatt family. Or maybe. Because what was great about the Shield and the Wyatts three on three battles? Yeah. Right. That was. Can you can anybody argue? And Mike, I'm looking for your response in the chat room that that Wyatts versus Shield was the height of the Wyatts. Definitely. Well, they they were the only they, they were the first team to beat the shield right, mm-hmm. so wait 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 <laughs> they're Alex says they're they're literally having Roman do all of Rock's last matches. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what is it? Why is Roman doing the Rock farewell tour? <laughs> so I I don't know. We need to stop with the shield and the why is it's over? Stop trying to make it make fetch happen. <laughs> <laughs> we we do need to move forward. Um, uh, I, yes, you can. 
um, yeah, just move past the Miz to Raj and uh, let's proceed directly to um, Shield versus um, the club. Let's get Fergie <laughs> there Ferg. There you go. Let's get Fergie Ferg and uh, Doc and, and Doc and Carl back together. OG Bullet Club, and let's do it like that. Yes, with a Cody's name on a on uh, on a pole match. Yes, that's right. With the Rhodes family name on a pole oh, match. Jeez, I don't want to get too much into it tonight because I feel like there's more fodder for the Mayhem show tomorrow. The but... hashtag BC Invasion. Oh, the BC Invasion. Are they, they're filming? What is, they're filming for a We Are Elite something or other? Oh, they're being what the, the being the Elite episode is going to drop soon. Oh, probably yeah? tonight. Probably by the time you're watching us said, right here, they said it's tonight. probably on the internet. So, I mean, don't rush off. You know, finish so watching this, this but then. Go watch wow, them. So They're good. Many Hard-working kids. So uh, too sorg me, guys. <laughs> There's so many caps happening in the chat room right now, and you know who they're from. Bull Club was in tow tonight. <laughs> yes. Uh, there was a lot of too sweet chants as well. I, I You know, I, and, and I sent you just about, I don't know, half a dozen tweets. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was <laughs> like, look at all this crazy yeah, you shit. Did. You just like uh, dropped all of them in the cycle. Like, look at all this. Look. Anyway, so, but, but you really haven't lived until you've watched... Cody Rhodes recite President Whitmore's speech from Independence Day. I'm still waiting. without a script in front of him, just I, off from memory through a megaphone. It's impressive to the to the masses. That's and, impressive. I mean, they I'm did pretty it. Sure, we know exactly how he got he he got the girl there by they like that was a first date. That's like definitely. Yep. Are you still nothing I, wins the ladies over like reciting movie lines. There you go. Works or, every or time. Entire entire speeches. Yeah, exactly. Entire monologues. Amazing. Then you're an actor. I'm still you do the whole monologue. If you only do a line, you're just a geek. If you could do the whole monologue, you're an actor. Hey, maybe that's how he got his role on Arrow. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, but anyways, uh, ladies, uh, we we did well, one. You know, we did have a tag match. Emma's still involved. Oh. But we also got Mickey and Alexa. Amazing. Sick burns. Yeah. She called her an old lady. What? That's the meanest thing I've ever heard on WWE TV in a long Except time. Except when they were to- calling her Piggy James. That that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um and it was and it was pretty funny. Um <laughs> I was very entertained. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, why did you say it to my face? Like, they went on this for, for like a minute or so, like, 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 like a couple minutes. Why don't you say it to my face? Why don't you say it to my face? And I didn't watch the Raw talk, so I had no idea what Alexa said. I'm like, what mm. terrible thing did Alexa she say? She, and she turns she, and just say, all right, I'll say it. You're an old lady. And I'm like, oh, no, she didn't say that, did she? And then she said something about a training bra. And it was like, it, it, it was just like, I think, you know, we, we, we talk about like when we watch some of these shows and it feels like something somebody lit a fire. You know, especially around the pay per views uh, lately, and I, I, I feel like there's something going on. It's like, yeah, just sick burn everybody. Just be yeah. the meanest, you know, asshole you can out there. Between the Enzo stuff, between the Rock and and uh, I'm sorry, not the Rock, Roman and Cena. We're gonna be yeah. doing this a lot now. Um, you know, uh, with Enzo, that you know, between the Alexa and Mickey James stuff, like it's like, no, say the meanest thing possible. Well, just like. Bring that little sliver of reality. I mean, that that's What's what makes everything work. That, that's right? why the Enzo promo worked tonight because he's telling Neville, "Look, you never stepped foot into the third hour of Raw while you were the champion. Now I'm the champ, and here you are." I mean, it's it, it ain't lying. It, it's reality, it's and a, you know yeah. the same thing goes with the uh, the Mickey and Alexa thing. And isn't it nice that age is still something in our current political climate? That age is still a. a a fair game insult, you know. That's nice. Dave, Dave, Dave says that Mickey is a whole twelve years older. That's that. And then, come on, that's let's. That's old lady as Mickey far as is WWE. our contemporary. I, I mean, that's old lady as far as uh, WWE is concerned. I mean, we're talking like girls were retiring at like what thirty two. If, if Mickey James is an old lady, you and I are going to the old folks home like tomorrow. <laughs> it's over. It's different. Huh? It's AARP John time. John Cena's like, I don't know about you, this 40 me, guys. John Cena, see you later. <laughs> it's like, Florida, here we come. They're like, I don't know about this 40 guys. Meanwhile, Taker's like, I don't know about this 60. <laughs> Jeez. Damn right. Mickey survived being hit by a damn train. She survived a fall from a train overpass. No, no. That's right. She's hard. Not even James Storm could. Kill Mickey James. Alex pointing out that uh, just so you know, Oscar has literally faced all the women currently on Raw. Yeah, I will tell. I know this for certain. None of them are ready for Oscar. No, <laughs> no, that's been proven. <laughs> that has been proven. 
Um, Although we've never gotten the Oscar Alexa. That's like the, the, the thing that's hanging out there. But that's just that's the massacre at the end of the rainbow. I mean, everything else <laughs> is just kind of processed to you get think there. She just runs through everybody on the way. I think she should just run through everybody. On She's the way. had amazing matches with just about all of those uh, women currently on the roster. I don't mm. think she's ever. I don't think she ever had a match with Sasha. I don't think she ever had a match with Alexa. Um, but her match with Emma is amazing. Go watch Oscar's match with Emma at Takeover London if you haven't seen it yet. That is freaking well, that's when it was awesome. like her is, and Dana yeah. were like picking on her, basically doing um, like like the icons down. Yeah, they were the welcome wagon yeah. for Oscar, and that was great. And uh, obviously, Mickey James got a job out it, of her match is, with Oscar. So that Mike, was great too. Mike is pointing out that Oscar uh, did fight Alexa back in the Blake and Murphy days. Oh, did she? So that's what I was thinking. Good to and, know. And of course, there's house shows and, and everything like that, but nothing TV, of course, says Alex. Um, so, uh, and we're gonna put this out here for you guys, especially Mike. How much I think we already mentioned, but how much of Raw was watchable for you guys tonight? Uh, uh, Matt, where are you at? Um, let, let me tally up all my stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I like the stuff. Uh, I, I th- hey, you know what? I thought that Dean Braun match was a lot of fun. It was so everything with it Braun was. and Dean and that stuff was great. So that's about a good twenty minutes there. Roman Jacks, that hour. Roman Miz. Roman Miz was yeah, good. I think they did an hour thirty. I think they did fine. They hour did and an half, hour thirty. I'm going to because I'm trying to think what I hate. You know what? I, I forgot about Mickey and Alex. I'll go an hour forty five. See, uh, hour forty five. That's high. Does that uh, seem high? Or I mean, or that's low. That's low. Like, All right, good. That's what I'm going for. An hour 45 it is. That's low. That's low. Because, I mean, I, I can't think of anything I really hated tonight. Um, I mean, it was just – it was good raw fodder tonight. Yeah, it was fine. You know, we, we have we have the stuff with the bar. We got yeah, this. Yeah, the, the Finn Goldust stuff was fine. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. Yeah, this this thread was Aside Enzo from the 30 right. seconds afterwards where I Bray mean, pops up. So. Uh, and, uh, just uh, Kurt being annoyed by Enzo all night was, like, my favorite Kurt thing so far since he came Oh, back. yeah, the little bit, and he, he – he offers, you know, Enzo. Oh, well, let me, uh, c- Enzo. Can I offer you some uh, some veteran advice? And Enzo's like, No, I'm good. And he just walks off. And perfect. I was like, Perfect. He's going heel. Slight prediction. Slight prediction. So I'll, I'm going to go to a two two point five on this one. Nice. But that's kind of my. I'm usually the two to two two point five. Uh, there are commercials, but anyways, um, <laughs> I hope Oscar's first match is Alicia Fox. I think she's the only other one that uh, she hasn't faced. Uh, Matt Mike says 45 minutes. All right, Mike. <laughs> is that it? You say so. All right, all right. <laughs> um, I mean, how am I supposed to? He's not. You know what? I, I like to. I like to uh, thank my Mike for for keeping true to his stipulation from last week and and you know bowing out of the the wrap up tonight because he did promise despite we just i just not plugged him in but the brock's just, victory would there you go render him delete anyway that's how we killed him off the show yeah um but anyways my answer to it wasn't question, us it was brock alex he, says he that it. my que- answer to the question will always be two hours always always he says we'll see we'll see what that means but anyways um i think that's a personal plea from alex Please, God, do, do just you think make this show two hours we, every week. He referenced it on Raw Wrap Up, and there were no new plates in the belt tonight. They were just the generic ones, and the, not you know the Neville ones were in last night. Uh, he 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 kind of teased it. Do we get a new cruiserweight belt tomorrow night on Two Hundred Five Live? A certified G belt. Further, further piss off the cruiserweight roster and Mad Mike. I think it's been alluded to and it would be a great idea mm-hmm. and it the more better, obnoxious the better it better spin and it better have leopard print oh yes like the, yeah. the, the leather is as leopard print yeah oh yeah yeah it's gonna be gaudy it's gonna with be like great. a little like tuft the hair off the top of it and everything like that mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of this i'm stuff. liking this i i am a big fan of the senzo stuff because it's pissing everybody else off i know I think people are starting to catch up now that he now after tonight. I think people are going to catch up, but for a while there it was getting pretty amazing because there was legitimate think, hatred. Like you, you pointed out, yeah, Jimmy Corderas hates Enzo Amore. He's <laughs> Canadian Jimmy and Corderas. the nicest Canadian I know. I know. Those Canadians are, are, are usually in the know. Jimmy Corderas sees no redeeming value in Enzo Amore. Like I saw a tweet. He's like, "What the hell is this?" Earlier tonight, or like you know, last night with the with the thing with Enzo winning. You know, it, it was it, like. For him to be offended by something in wrestling is mm-hmm. amazing. 
and and I wish I think it, sh- it shows on like Canadian TV or something, but I'd love to hear his opinions on that. Oh further. yeah, but um, yeah. So that's the raw wrap up, guys. Uh, Matt Mike is Mad Mike forty eight eight three. He's uh, also a part of the midweek war where we talk lucha underground, where we'll be losing our minds for Ultima Lucha Trace. But uh, of course, mainstream Matt will not be joining us on that because he needs to catch up on Lucha Underground. Uh, I'm a month behind. What the hell? When did you become the me? I'm. Chris to Joseph, I'm sorry. That's all I have to say about that. Oh, jeez. I've fallen woefully behind. you got like four weeks to catch up. I'm way off the pace. And I haven't seen... I'm a month behind on Lucha Underground, and I've not seen Boone the Bounty Hunter yet. So Shit. I am suffering I my, on all fronts. I just let my copy... I, I just let my copy to Ringside Rob last night. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what he thinks. Mm-hmm. He's a he's mm-hmm. a film expert. He is, he is. What, what's up? What's that? You find, oh, yeah, Boone, hot tip. Boone no. the Bounty Hunter is at Dollar General for like eight no. bucks. So No, pay full price for Boone the Bounty Hunter. Come on. Well, the full price was nine ninety nine. <laughs> pay full so, price. Pay nine ninety nine. Get, get those ones from Walmart so he doesn't have to buy them back uh, and lose his house. Uh, oh, God. What the fucking fuck, Matt Carlins? <laughs> I Why think on the Boone tip. <laughs> Also, also, I did also pay. Is he more mad that I missed Boone, or is he I, I mad that I'm a month behind on Lucha? I, I, you know, I don't know. Get, get fucking booned at Matt Carlin's. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will try to get booned as quickly as possible. And, and, and also on the iTunes, I believe the the HD version on iTunes is fourteen ninety nine, so you can see all of his abs in its full glory. Well, that's better than full price. Yes. <laughs> the more money that goes back to Johnny Mundo, the better. Exactly, exactly. He fucking deserves it. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining. Oh, Mainstream Matt on the Twitter, right? With one T. One T. I'm yeah. at Sorgatron, SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great, great podcasts going on. We have The Rev, Ron L. Hunt, joining us on Wrestling Mayhem Show Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, on Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitch, all kinds of places. Wait, I, Fun. No, you're not allowed to ha- make that hand motion. That's not allowed. To, that, that was not I was a, raising my it, hand. It, no, no, not like that. Not like that. Not like it's that. It's the right to censor no. pose. Anyway. Um, hey, fun fact. My seven-year-old once beat up Ron Hunt. What? Yeah. Yeah, I witnessed that. <laughs> we'll have to ask him about that tomorrow on the show. He asks your questions. Not, not, not so much an interview. He's just joining us here on the show. Um, first time in, in studio with us. Um, and we're going to be talking to Tom Liturgy uh, later this week about the CCAC class that he's conducting on the history of Pittsburgh wrestling. He is Professor Tom Liturgy. Professor. Maybe now. But uh, also, apparently. like, big time, long timer in the indies around here in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. He knows a lot. So he's, it's going to be he's awesome. He's guy. I don't even know where to start talking with him. I know. I'm just going to be like, so what's up? Yeah, and just, like, yeah, see yeah. what we could talk about. You're going to be in for that one? Yeah, I'm going to try gonna... to make it in for that one. because My co-interviewer? Just so I can just listen. You know, he's got... Yeah, guys like that around here, guys, he's got like a wealth of th- knowledge. This might be a long one. Yeah. And, and it's going to be super localized, but it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. But if, but if you like the old school, if you have an appreciation for the old school and the territory days, kind of, mm. then I think Tom's going to bring a lot to the table. Yeah, that will kind of be, appeal it's to be a you. Blast. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the Raw Wrap Up. Please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher. I can't remember all the places. Wherever you like podcasts, there's probably a Raw Wrap Up. We'll just put that out there. So um, I thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Keep it 